Uh, I love Easter eggs. I like red ones, blue ones, green ones, I yellow love, ones, I like chocolate ones, silver ones, oh, gold ones, ones, black ones. ones. So purple are definitely my. How's my hair look? Spotting lovely. Well, what about the back? Is it all sticking up? Well, it's very really much. I feel like I can't do this very well. Oh, or Ian, come and sort me out. It just can't.
thank you all for coming on this Easter Sunday. I am very excited this Easter Sunday. It's one of my favourite days of the year. And um, we just want to welcome you here. And um, can we get your seats? Donna, and Donna, 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 Donna. What? Donna. I was just going to start off the... Uh, listen, I am so this. excited. This is my absolute favourite day of the entire year. Well, yes, yes. It, it has got a lot going for it, yeah. yeah. Oh. Um, tell me why. Oh, it's just... It's just guess. Um, I've got to say it's probably because of all the Easter eggs. It's not that. Oh, um, well, I mean, there's a lot of exciting things. Uh, Easter egg hunt later on. That's good reason, but it's not that. Um, could it be two weeks off work? Oh, yes, but it's not that. Um, oh, hang on, let me get... Um, uh, lamb dinner. Lamb, my delicious lamb dinner. Your delicious lamb dinner. <laughs> no, it's not even that. OK, you, you're going to have to tell me. I am excited because today is Easter Sunday. <laughs> Do you know, I just absolutely love Easter Sunday. I do like Christmas, but Easter Sunday's just got that extra special punch, hasn't it? Because this is the day we get to celebrate that Jesus is alive. And uh, great audience participation, by the way. (laughs) Um, Yeah, just, you know, Friday we were thinking about the cross and we were thinking about how Jesus died for us. We were thinking about... You know, that he died for us, for our sin, all the bad things that we did. But today is even more amazing, because today is the day we celebrate that he is alive. And we worship a God that's alive today and living in us, and that's amazing. Well, I think when I'm that excited about something, I think there's only one thing we can do, and that's to have a party. Who wants a party? (laughs) Yeah, but hang on, Don. We're in church. We haven't got any party stuff. Um, I got a hat. Oh. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Okay. Let's have a party. Yeah, but we need to do a bit more than that, surely. Um, but, 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 but Easter egg. How about we play some games? Yeah, who wants to play some games? Yes, let's do it. Okay, I know this great game. There's a game called Balloon Volleyball. Balloon Volleyball. Who loves Balloon Volleyball? Come on. Okay, right. So I'm going to need some volunteers. So, who, I need three volunteers for this side and three volunteers for this side. And those people who are coming in late, you need to get sitting down quick or I'm going to pick you to be a volunteer. And let's go for one on this side, one on this side, another one on this side, another one on this side, and one on each side. Okay. So, they need a purple balloon. They need a purple balloon. So, these are the rules. Show me who my volunteers are. One, two, three, one, two, and your hand. Three, okay, right. This is what we need to do. One of you is gonna get a balloon. Maybe we'll go for the shortest person first, okay? So oh, have a little shortest. look. You're gonna get a balloon and you are gonna pass it to all the grown-ups because they wanna play a game as well, don't they? And they need to pass it back, pass it back, pass it back. And then you need to run around the back, get the balloon, and bring it to the next person. Do you think you can do that? So, the smallest one, get the balloon, throw it to the grown-ups, they pass it back, so they're doing all the work, really. You go and get the balloon from the back, bring it to the next person, and the next person does it, and the next person does it, and when Oscar comes back down the front, and when Joel comes back down the front, then that side is the winner if you get down the front first. Do you think you could do that? It wouldn't really be a party without a bit of music. So maybe we could have a little bit of music while we do this. Maybe an appropriate Easter song would be good. So, are we ready? I'll give you a countdown of three. Are you ready? Three, two, one, go! Run around, Ellis. Run to the back.
It's exciting. I think that may be what it is. Fast children and slower grown ups. And the rules are going backwards. Back. Still haven't got the rules. Joel, go and rescue the balloon. Grab it, Joel. <laughs> bring it back, bring it back. Hey. Well done. Well done. You can all have a little sit down. Well done, well done. Thank you, thank you, everybody. Uh, well done, grown ups this side. Well, I'm pumped after that, but you know what? I still don't feel like I'm quite celebrated enough. Have you got another game for us, Dan? Oh, another game, another game, another game. Yes! I love balloons. Let's have another balloon game. Yeah. This time, I need eight volunteers. Eight volunteers. Come on down. Anybody else out feeling left out out there and you'd really like to volunteer? Because i got lots down here. Okay, right then. We've got one. Go and grab a balloon with a word on it. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Joel, swap it. Okay. Have you all got a balloon with a word on it? Look at your balloon. It needs to have a word on it. Have a look. Have you got a word on it? So, we said today's an exciting day. We are playing games with balloons. You have got about 15 seconds to get yourself organised into a sentence that you think might make sense for Easter. Are you ready? Oh, look at your word. Oh, look at your word. Can you, whilst the music is playing, get yourself into an order that would make sense? Go, 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 go. What would come next? Go that way. How the belt, boys? Yes, you're at the end. He is not. Well done. He is not. Can we see your words? Does that say here? Yeah. He is not here. He has. Rizek, can you all turn and show your balloon to everybody out there? He is not here. Good boy, hold it up. Hold it up. He has risen. Matthew 28, verse 6. Full stop. Lovely. <laughs> Please, yeah. Okay, right. Uh, have we got a verse on the screen? Right, thank you, boys and girls. You can uh, sit down now. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. How wonderful volunteers. So, I think this verse just sums up why I am so excited this morning. He is not here. He is risen. Matthew 28, verse 6. And that is the reason we are celebrating this morning. So, I'm just going to say um, a prayer for us now, and then I'll hand back to Sarah. So... Dear Father God, thank you this morning that we can celebrate, we can lift our voices, lift our hands up to you this morning because you are alive and we thank you that you live inside us too. So help us just to celebrate with um, all that we are this morning, in Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Thank you everybody. Amen. Thank you so much, Mark and Donna. I love it. I feel like I'm ready, ready to celebrate. Are you guys? What about you guys out there? Yeah, absolutely. And we were talking before the service, lots of us feeling super excited. Did anyone make it down to the beach for the dawn service this morning? Well done. I'm impressed. There's one or two here. We were planning to, but we didn't quite get there. But it's such a lovely way to welcome in Easter morning. Okay. Sometimes we... Uh, we wonder, what should we do to, to kick off the service? What should we do to start? But starting with a party is the best way. And do you know what we really want to do next? So we just want to worship God because the truth of this verse is, is our reality today, that he's not dead, he is alive. And because he's alive, we're alive too. And I, I, I don't know if this is a story that you have for yourselves, but when we know God and when we accept him as our saviour, we don't have to stay in the grave. 
Death does still sting. Death does still hurt here on earth. But we have the freedom of resurrection to rise again with him. And today, let's celebrate him. So if you're willing and able, will you stand now this morning? I'm going to pray and we're going to go straight into a time of worship and celebration of all that this Easter represents. Lord God, we thank you so much for Easter, Lord. We thank you so much that you died for us. Lord, that you looked on me, you looked on each and every one of us and you decided we were worthy of that, Lord. And that's such a miracle. But God, today we celebrate that you didn't stay dead. You didn't stay in that grave. You didn't leave us, Lord, but that you came back to life. You rose again to show us the hope of this Resurrection Sunday, Lord. And so we want to celebrate you and we want to worship you today because there's no greater day in history than today and uh, and all that today uh, represents, Lord. Let's worship him together.
desperation I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night then through the darkness your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul the work is finished the end is written Jesus Christ my Step down from glory to where my sin and bear my shame. The cross is spoken, I am forgiven. The King of Kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. With a thousand tongues to lift one cry Then from north to south And east to west We hear Christ be magnified Echoing his eminence 
His name would burst from sea and sky From rivers to the mountain tops We to Christ be magnified And every human heart is native crime. I'll stand strong and worship you And if it puts me through the fire I'll rejoice cause you're there too I won't be forced by feelings I hold fast to what is true If the cross brings transformation I can hang me there with you Cause death is just the doorway Into resurrection life If I join you morning as we worship we we're celebrating the resurrection of Jesus and we talked earlier about how we get to stand with him in that resurrection but do you know sometimes it doesn't feel like we're standing and it doesn't feel like a celebration it feels like the mountains are too high that the chasm between us is too wide But you know, throughout the Gospels, we see 
how Jesus, it wasn't just Jesus who rose from the dead, but there were so many moments where God showed us, Jesus showed us a glimpse that resurrection, that life after death was his plan. We see it in the story of Lazarus, of a young girl he raised to life. So if you're sitting here or you're standing here this morning and you feel like you are dead, that you're spiritually dead, that you feel empty, I just want to encourage you. I want to remind you that it was in the lives of ordinary people that God started to show the miracle of resurrection. That there is life for all of us as we meet with him and as we accept him as our savior. And I just want to give you a moment in the middle of this celebration Sunday just to fix your eyes on him. And as you fix your eyes on him, I'm just going to pray simply that God would reveal a spark of life within you that perhaps you think is buried and gone. Because I know that's his heart. So Lord God, this morning, I pray that you would just ignite something in us. It doesn't have to look like emotion. It doesn't have to look like tears or shouts of joy. But Lord, that somewhere deep within our souls, Lord, because deep calls to deep, you speak to the deepest part of us. I pray that we would know something of your resurrection this morning. That that part of us that we've kept hidden and dark, Lord, that you would just shine your light right now that we would know that there is no sin too great that your love cannot overcome. That there is no loneliness so complete that you cannot enter in, Lord, into that relationship. Whether we feel isolated or we feel exhausted, if we feel angry and a, a burden of unforgiveness, Lord. Lord, we speak life we declare life right now not in my power lord not in the power of a song that we sing but because you called us to life and i love to remember in my own heart lord i love to remember that you didn't come to just make us better you brought us back to life can we sing let christ be magnified let's sing that chorus together and as we sing that I want us to sing it to our souls, that we sing out that Christ will be magnified in our lives, not our own sin, not our own pain or our own darkness, but that it would be Him that brings life and hope right now. Oh, Christ be magnified, let His praise arise, Christ be magnified in me. altar of my life, Christ be magnified in me, oh Christ be magnified, let his praise arise, Christ be magnified in me, oh Christ be magnified from the altar of my life. Thank you, Lord, that you are our living hope. Thank you, Lord, that this morning we're not in the grave, we're in glory, Lord. We can celebrate your glory. Amen. Amen. I'm switching mics. Thank you, guys. Thanks, team. Isn't it great to sing and to worship? I just, I just feel like I could sing and worship all day today, and we're going to sing again a little bit later. But for now, I'm going to send the children out to their kids' church next door, where I think you might be having a bit of a party, guys, celebrating the resurrection. I'll come out with you.
Lord God, I pray your blessing over the kids team and the children themselves, Lord. I thank you that there is so much to the story of your resurrection that we could never know it all. But Lord, I just, I'm so excited by the fact that these children are next door, Lord, maybe learning more about this for the first time, Lord. I pray that you would just help that miracle to take root in their lives, Lord, as they learn, Lord. Amen. We're, uh, as the children are going out, I'm just going to give you a couple of notices. I haven't got loads of things to sort of give you in terms of moving forward, but I do want to tell you about um, an event that happened here on Thursday. If you haven't heard, we had our excellent Easter. Oh, extravag- extravaganza. I knew there was a pun in it. Experience. Great Easter. Ex- I knew there was a pun in there somewhere. Um, which, I have to say, I was here myself. My children came along. It was Fantastic. I know they have gone out, but can we just have a massive cheer and a round of applause for the team who are next door who ran that? I know some are in here as well. I, uh, I was really excited because as soon as it was announced, it was put on to uh, the class group chat that I have with people from Elias's class. Lots of parents signing up straight away. We thought we were going to have, I think it was about 51 signups, but we ended up with 75 children here in this space, which is, yeah, I think it was really amazing. And it didn't feel chaotic or crazy. I mean, it was crazy in the best way, but it didn't feel chaotic at all because the team were just incredible. And I, and I have, to, have to say that I'm endlessly grateful and impressed by their hard work and, and all that they do. But fantastic. We also had lots of adults in the room, lots of parents who stayed. So um, I'm going to pray, actually. I want to pray over that because there's so many people maybe who are here, perhaps in a church for the first time, or hearing the story, uh, the Easter story, which Rian shared excellently with the children. Um, and Lord, I, I'm just going to pray that, that God would like continue to do work in those people's lives. Lord, we don't know whether that's the first seed on the start of a journey or if it's the last, but um, I'm just going to pray over that now. Lord God, I thank you that um, in this room, we had so many people that perhaps didn't know that story, Lord, or had heard it in a, a simple way many years ago and, and had forgotten about it. Um, and we just thank you that even in the in the ways that we share it with children, even in the the simple telling of the story of Easter, there is a a power. Um, And I just really want to pray now, Lord, that anybody who is here in this space um, and heard that story would just continue to dwell on it, Lord, that they would reflect on what they heard, perhaps ask questions of people they know, or maybe come to this space again to find out a little bit more, Lord. We just thank you that you are moving in Sketty Park, Lord. You are moving in Swansea. um, And we're grateful we get to be part of that story. Um, so we just really pre- continue to pray for that, continue to pray for growth in our kids' ministry, um, both in terms of children, but also in terms of volunteers, people stepping up and joining that um, in the exciting time that it's in, Lord. Amen. Amen. Right. I w- also want to mention as well, there's not sort of loads of other notices I want to give, but if you are not currently signed up to our Parklands newsletter through the email, get signed up. It really is the best way to get all the information into your inbox in the middle of the week. I find that it informs me about things and it just keeps me sort of up to date with what's going on. It's also a great way we're sort of celebrating and sharing some of the work that we're giving to as a church. Um, And it's great because we're going to do our offering in just a second. We believe that it's a huge part of our calling as a church that God calls us to give generously of of our finances. And, um, but it's great to know where that's going and what the, the, some of the, the works that we are supporting. So sign up to the newsletter. Um, and also, if you're here for the first time or you haven't been in a while, please do stick around at the end. Grab a cup of coffee with us. And uh, we will, yeah, we'd love to get to know you and connect with you a little bit more. Uh, we're not doing lunch today. Um, sorry if there was any confusion, but there will be lunch coming up in a couple of weeks' time, I'm sure. So um, please stay for coffee and biscuits. Okay. don't know why I said it like that. So we're going to do... Uh, <laughs> Clearly, I'm excited. Um, We're going to do our offering now. We're going to take the offering. So you can give by scanning the QR code on the screen. You can also give at the back, or the buckets will be coming around. No no, no giving at the back. So either QR code or the buckets will be coming around. Um, uh, We're going to give in that way. So while we're doing that, I would like you to discuss with people around you. um, A, firstly, have you had any Easter eggs? And secondly, if so, what's what's the best Easter egg? (laughs) I'm really good at coming up with these questions, guys. <laughs> Discuss.
Okay. I always wonder when I look out and I see that some people are very intensely discussing. And I think, is this about the best Easter egg? It's become quite, uh, quite the discussion. Okay. What is the best Easter egg? Everyone shout it out. One, two, three. I don't know what that was. I heard crunchy. I heard crunchy. Um, okay. We are going to, I'm going to hand over to Matt in just a second, who is going to share with us a message for, for Easter Sunday, all about the resurrection. And, and um, I'm just going to pray. Matt, you want to come up and, and join me? We'll pray. Lord God, I thank you for Matt. I thank you for um, the courage and the grace that you have given him in leading us as a fellowship, Lord, and leading us as a church. I thank you that this morning he brings you a message that, that he has written, that he has worked hard on, that he has put energy into, Lord, but also that has been uh, breathed into by your spirit, Lord, that you are moving through this message. And uh, Lord, as we, as we listen, as we, um, as we receive this, this word that you've put on his heart, God, God, I pray that we wouldn't take that lightly, Lord, that we would be ready to be challenged, to be encouraged, and to be excited about what you are doing um, through your word and in our lives today as well, Lord. So I pray uh, that you can continue to fill in with your courage and fill in with your spirit as he shares now. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Good to see you. You well? Yes. You awake? There we go. It's good. Always good when we lose an hour's sleep. Um, tried to plan to go to bed earlier last night, but still up at the crack of dawn. It's good to be here today because today is the pinnacle. Um, as we've had our party at the start, thank you, Mark and Donna, um, for my favorite thing in the world, balloons. Can't stand them. Um, it's, the, it's the source of every argument in the Chrome household. A balloon, ask Claire. Uh, Millie and Meg love to torture each other over them. Anyway, but today is Easter Sunday. It's the pinnacle. It's the top. It's, it's what it's all about. And I'm just delighted to be able to share today. And it's a bit of a whistle-top tour of the whole of Scriptures. But I really feel God just wants to remind us what it's all about. Um, to celebrate what it's all about. But then also just draw us right back to him. It's a day so, so different to the week that we've just had over the past week. The pain, the heartache, the despair of Good Friday. And we come to it today, which is so, so different, so victorious. Jesus was beaten, betrayed, tortured, crushed in the most brutal way on that cross. Dead, buried. But the story never ended there, did it? Without the resurrection, all hope is gone. Without the resurrection, the story doesn't continue. Yet on the third day, hope rises and victory is declared. For many of us in this room, we may be very, very familiar with this story. We've sung about it today. We've spoke about it through time. We've grasped the importance of it to our faith. And for some of us here, this may be very, very new. Put simply, though, the Easter story, the cross and the resurrection is the bedrock of Christianity. 
It's the foundation. It's the moment in history when things completely changed and intimacy with God is birthed. Brief summary, looking through God's plan and how it came to be. God's plan was to dwell with us in the beginning through his Eden, through his creation. Sin enters the world and causes this great divide. And God's redemption plan throughout all, we see it throughout all of the Old Testament, is God's dwelling place. But it's behind ritual, it's behind sacrifice. It's on the anointed few. And his presence would fall on people and then leave. From the garden to the mountaintop to the tent, God's presence was few and far between. That separation was seen throughout all of history. And nothing of human plan could heal that divide. Yet, God stepped in skin form in the form of Jesus into this world. And the story shifts a little bit. Humanity could touch Jesus. They could embrace him. They could talk to him. They could connect with him. They could reach out through the crowds and touch his clothes. The gap was brought closer, but the story didn't end there. The world couldn't see him, though. The world didn't know this was the Messiah. Despite the miracles, despite the compassion, the love, the prophecies, the things all told about him, he was crushed, crucified as an ultimate sacrifice for us. And that's where we reflected on Good Friday. And at this point, the curtain is torn in the temple. So significant. Before that, only the anointed one could enter it one time a year and could go behind that curtain. But in the moment of Jesus' death, that curtain is torn. And no longer was that separation there. It is finished. All those wrestles, all those rituals, all those places where God met humanity was torn down. And it was healed. But that still wasn't the end. And we come to the resurrection, the most mind-blowing, incredible miracle that we could ever comprehend. Pronounced dead, buried, put away, but now alive. Buried within a tomb, yet on the third day, gone. And angels appearing to pronounce, he's not here, he has Risen. Thank you very much. Just checking you learnt your memory verse. And I love the words of one of these songs. Um, I'm not going to sing. Don't worry. Sin- no. I'm definitely not Charity Gale, put it that way. Sin separated. The breach was far too wide. But from the far side of the chasm, you had me in your sight. So you made a way across the great divide. Left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside. There at cross you paid the debt I owed. Broke my chains, freed my soul, and for the first time I had hope. You took my place, laid inside my tomb of sin. You were buried for three days, but you walked right out again. Now death has no sting and life has no end. It was nothing that was of earthly sense, is it? We often hear like stories of, of near misses or remarkable stories of people's survival. I don't know if you saw about that. That guy was on a boat and the boat sunk to the bottom of the ocean and he survived for days upon days upon days in, a, in an air pocket. Anyone seen that? It's a remarkable story. And some divers come down to, to get the wreckage and they find someone. Can you imagine that as a diver? The boat's been down. And we hear these stories, but we don't hear of stories where someone dies is buried, and then is risen again. Even then, those who knew this was going to be happening, the lovely disciples kind of forgot. (laughs) They were told, Jesus said, this is going to happen. But some of them had walked off in despair. Some of them were downbeat. Some of them were downcast. Even though those wonderful women, Mary and Mary, came with the burial spices, ready to prepare a dead body. Interestingly, it was that some of the, the chief priests and the empire at the time, they were the ones who were saying, look, put some guards in front of the tomb, so just in case they try and take his body, because he said something might happen. But it wasn't mission impossible with the disciples, 
It wasn't, how do we get the body out of there? It was supernatural. Only made possible with God. Death defeated. 1 Corinthians says, The last enemy to be destroyed is death, for he has put everything under his feet. Jesus put everything under his feet. And through his death, he might destroy the one who was the power of the death. And that is the devil. He had completely beaten everything. And something we should never, ever forget, church. Something we should never, ever forget. Because this moment in history, this mind-blowing act, this beyond comprehensive, comprehensive miracle changes everything for humanity, changes everything for me and you. There is nothing, no one who is above Christ. Even death, even the grave. Everything is under Christ. And that has so much victory. Something for us today. Something for the people back then. And something for the future. The story, when you look historically, the story of Easter has a lot of historical evidence, more than many other moments in history. But today I just want to pull on someone I really believe we can, we can trust. Someone who knew Jesus. Someone who was one of the first disciples. One very close to Jesus. One who saw the empty tomb. One who saw Jesus after the resurrection and encounters his miracle power again. And someone who experiences forgiveness despite his denial. And that man is Peter. Peter was a man who walked with Jesus. He talked with Jesus. And he encountered his love and grace, didn't he? He knew the resurrection story and most importantly, its power. And I just want to go into a little scripture today that he shared and I think is really important for us all to grasp. It says this, Praise be to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. New life, new hope, a new eternity. Isn't that good? New life. Through the resurrection of Jesus, we are all invited into a new life. Easter is full of eggs, bunnies with eggs. I still cannot get my head. Where did that come from? Who thought eggs? bunnies don't have eggs? I'd be more happy with a chicken. Delivering the eggs. But a bunny. See? I've got Donna thinking. But our images of spring and Easter are surrounded by new life, aren't they? The the plants coming up, the daffodils. And it's the foundation of God's heart. Throughout this miracle, throughout this resurrection, we see God's heart for new life. Throughout scriptures, we see a three-day rhythm. On the third day, he creates the seeds, plants, and trees. Three days later, humanity is birthed in creation. We see on, with Abraham's journey to the sacrifice, it's on the third day that God gives him a new promise. Is the people of Israel wait three days for God to arrive on Mount Sinai to birth a new hope? Jonah is in a whale for three days and then given a new chance. And Jesus is dead and on the third day rises again. Christianity isn't a story about death and despair. It's about new life. That's God's heart. An invite to turn around, new chance, new birth, we call it. Resurrection life allows us to leave our old self dead and buried and never, ever look back. It's the same way a caterpillar goes from an oversized maggot to a beautiful butterfly. 
And it's the same for us. We can go from those oversized maggots to beautiful butterflies. Beautiful butterflies. And God's calling us to go through this Easter new life story. He's calling us into it. He's calling us into a new birth. And this is so, so powerful in the world we live in and at the time that this message was shared as well. Because we're all trying to be someone, aren't we? We're all trying to have an identity in something, whether that be from a royal background, whether that be from a, a, a line of wealth, whether that be, um, at the time, like a, a religious elite. Everyone is trying to be something. Or people are defined by their poor choices, or rejected from society, or cast aside because they have illness. And Jesus says, Jesus says, there's new life into my family for you all. I've been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in my body, I live for the, by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Life is birthed within me. This is so, so powerful because this is not of worldly origin. This is not of worldly descent. This is not of my background, where I've come from, where I was born. This is new life in one family with Jesus for everyone. Romans 8, spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you. That through Jesus we die to our old ways and we live for the new. But it doesn't stop there. We're given hope. So we have new life. We're birthed into this invitation of a new family and a new way of being and putting the old sinful self behind but we're born into a new hope, and a hope that is so, so deep that it's not of this world. Hebrews 16, 6, 19 is something I shared on, on Tuesday for, for Glenn's funeral. But as we have a hope, that, an anchor for our soul, firm and secure, this goes beyond comprehension. This goes beyond what that makes sense in this world. It's a different kind of hope. I'm really hoping today for something that my oven works on the time I said it. Otherwise, I'm going to go back to a raw chicken. I'm quite worried about it. I hope, don't we? We all hope that it's the holidays. I hope it stays dry. I live in Wales. It just rains and rains and still rains and snows. But we have hope. We have hope when we, we pick up a new recipe and we put it together and we go, I really hope this, this tastes good. Or we have hope that we might see an endangered animals. I saw a hedgehog this week. I didn't realize they were endangered. There we go. But we have hope, don't we? We have hope throughout all our life. We have hopes and dreams. But nothing compares to the hope of the resurrection. Because this is so different. This world lets us down. People let us down. Workplace let us down. Situations let us down. But in Christ, Peter says these words, we're filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. Whatever our circumstances, there's something deep within us to know that we are loved. Known we are accepted and not rejected. And in the world of Paul, we know contentment. We know a peace in every single situation. There's a bigger story at work. It's a hope. That outweighs despair. It's the victory that beats the trial. It's the peace that calms the storm. It's the deep-rooted joy that beats any circumstance. That's resurrection hope, church. That's the resurrection hope that we have. It's knowing that God is in work with us and in us. And this is all marked on this final point of a new eternity. A new eternity, an inheritance that will never waste away. Peter uses these, these, word, these words again. Filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy, for you are receiving the end results of your faith, the salvation of your souls. So a new life in this world, a new hope in this world, but a new eternity to come. The resurrection lifts our eyes beyond what we see and understand. 
It takes us to that place of that story that we're sharing about today. Just, it's uncomprehensible how can someone die and rise again. The resurrection of Jesus lifts our eyes to way beyond the timeline that we can see here. It says in Hebrews, let's fix our eyes on Jesus. Because that's really what comes down to the foundation of our life here. It's the hope at the grave. It's the, the future completely new. It's the story that hasn't been completed yet. This is a hope that you're invited to in the resurrection. It's that, it's that Revelation 21 hope of the future that's to come. A new earth, a new heaven, a new earth. Look, God's dwelling place is going to be restored. And this is what it's all about. This is the, the resurrection hope church. This is why we gather. This is why we sing. This is why we go wild. This is why we have balloons. This is why we do what we do. It's because Jesus came for us. To bring us to him. To give us a new Simply put, that, that gospel message, that message of Jesus, the message of Easter is that Jesus died for us. Jesus has risen, and that gives us new life, new hope, and a new eternity. It's something we're all invited to. And it's something I think we should grasp and never, ever forget. Never forget, because it's, it's that hope and joy in, in the pain. It's that peace when things are just falling apart around you and you go, what on earth is happening? Is God is that bedrock and companion. And at that moment, which will come to us all, it's a hope that just make, doesn't make sense. I was chatting to someone who goes to, who plays at many, many funerals and was just sharing about the despair and how just dire funerals are. But then he came on Tuesday and discovered the hope and faith of a man who followed God with his, all of his life. And he was like, that was different. That's, that's the point. This is different. This is the message we hold. God's story is all about restoring our intimacy and our relationship with our creator God. Whatever our questions, whatever our fears, whatever our failings, whatever our background, whatever we're going through, Jesus says, I'm here for you. I don't know how I flew through all my talk there. <laughs> but I'm passionate about this, and I think we need to hold on to it. Whatever our circumstances, to hold on to that resurrection hope, because it's real, it's alive, it's living, and it's here today. Here today. And as I was thinking about this, and that, that summary of the gospel, the summary of what it's all about, I just really... Felt reminded to encourage us to live it out, to hold on to it, to never forget. But also the fact that Jesus is inviting you into it. You know, something that's really powerful about the stories of the resurrection and Jesus appearing after is how he comes to the most intimate place. With humanity. The creator God of heavens and earth, the one who performed miraculous miracles, the one who's defeated Satan, defeated death, rises again. And we read of these encounters of Jesus appearing in the scriptures after this. And I just love it. I love it because it comes to the most beautiful place of intimacy for us all. He meets the downcast disciples on the road to Emmaus. The ones going, oh, I'm fed up. And I love, love, love that story in Luke. Just walk, just casually walking alongside, chatting away. Oh, I'm, disciples are sharing. He's dead. He's gone. He's like, oh, tell me, tell me more. Just standing next to them. But 
It's when he breaks bread and wine at the table. Their eyes open. They have that revelation. Jesus is with us. To the disciples in the locked room, hidden away, Jesus comes in and miraculously appears and sits and dines with them. He sits with them. He's not a distant God. And Peter's tale, which I love, they're out fishing on the boat. He tells them to put their nets the other way, you'll get some more fish. They recognize them, they look in from the shore, they see Jesus there. And they go, it's him, it's him. And as they come closer, these are the words. These are the words in the scriptures. They saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and bread. And he feeds them. Jesus had made a barbecue for them. Jesus was there to just connect with them. The host of hosts, the king of kings, the one above everything, is having a barbecue for his friends. And that's what he does for me and for you. In all his might, in all his majesty, the king of kings comes to the table. Can I borrow you, Sarah? King of Kings says, Come, Richard, grab a chair. Come eat. Sit with me. Talk with me. Tell me about your life. Let's break this. <laughs> eat with me. And this is the story of the gospel. This is the resurrection hope. That all that separation was brought back to this place of intimacy. Imagine those times with your family when you sit and you chat over dinner. That's Jesus. What do you do? You feel free to stay, <laughs> eat, take a croissant. My girls have already lined up the cookies. But you know what, church? That's what I want to invite you all to today, is to eat, is to sit at this table. As we come to a, a land now, for me, this image just jumped off the page of all that resurrection hope, of all that glory. It's here where Jesus wants to meet you. Whatever your background, whatever your pain whatever your heartache, whatever you're going through, this, this is where he wants to be with you. I'm just going to invite the worship team up. I don't know what all your histories are, your backgrounds are today. I love the fact that the youngsters, the the, user, the youth are in with us today. I love the fact that those who have had a, a longer life are here with us today. I love the fact that we're from different countries, different backgrounds, different, different neurodiversities. Whatever we, we are, we're all invited to this place. All invited to this place. Let me read the words of this song and I really do want to just invite you to Jesus today. And if you want to come and eat, sit at the table, to get that picture in your head, feel free. If you want to just reflect, feel free. If you want to bounce for joy, feel free. But in all this resurrection hope, the new life, the new hope, the new eternity, Jesus is inviting Hear the voice of love that's calling. There's a chair that waits for you. And a friend who understands everything you're going through. 
You keep standing at a distance in the shadow of your shame. But there's a light of hope that's shining. Won't you come and take your place at the table? He can see the weight you carry, the fears that hold your heart. But through the cross, you've been forgiven. You're accepted as you are. So bring it all to this table. And come on in, take your place. There's no one who's turned away. There's no one who's turned away. All you sinners, all you saints, come right in and find your grace. Come on in, take your place. Bring it all to that table. There's nothing he ain't seen before. All your sin, all your sorrow, all your sadness, there's a saviour. And he calls, bring it all to the table. It's Easter church. Grab on to the resurrection hope. Grab on to Jesus with all that you have. And sit. us. I thank you that your Easter story, the resurrection hope, brings us hope. Thank you, Lord, that the grave isn't the end, and I thank you that you just want to sit, eat, eyeball us, embrace us, and bring us into your kingdom. Thank you, Lord, it's your body that's broken. As you shared with your disciples, it's your blood that is poured as a new covenant and a new promise. I thank you, Lord, that everyone in this room, everyone in Swansea, in this world can come and dine with the King of Kings. Thank you, Lord, for that new hope. Amen. darkness we were waiting without hope without light till from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the day the lost to redeem the whole creation you did not despise the cross for even in your suffering you saw to the other side knowing this was our salvation Jesus for your sake you
that you rose Whole of heaven held its breath Till that stone was moved for good Found a lamb had conquered death And the dead rose from their tombs And the angels stood in awe For the souls of all who come To the Father are restored And the church of Christ was born last song if you want to come and sit at the front row we'll, we'll just come and sit with us if you want some prayer come and, and prayer if you just want to quickly grab and go you quickly do that but just remember this invite is for each and every one of you and that's what today is all about and that's why we're filled with hope and that's why he is the light of the world and we just give him the glory don't be afraid to come forward don't be afraid to nudge someone if you need them to bring it to you, because that's exactly what Jesus would say to each and every one of you. Amen. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever sing. We live for you, oh, we live for you, holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside you, open up my eyes in wonder, show me who you are and fill me with your heart and Sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever see. 
Hallelujah. God is good. And by His Holy Spirit, He's here now. Right now. Hallelujah. And some of you might be here and you don't know the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior. I'm going to pray a prayer. And if that's you, then you can, uh, you can say that prayer after me or you can say it with me in your heart. And if that's for the first time that you're inviting the Lord Jesus into your life, we would love you to come and tell us so that we can help you on your journey. There's booklets, there's Bibles we can give you, but more importantly, that you can be a part of us as we grow together. Coming to know the Lord Jesus is, is a once-in-a-lifetime kind of thing, but getting to know Him more and more is every day. So if, uh, if you are in that situation where you don't know the Lord Jesus. Maybe you want to pray this prayer along, along with me. So with all eyes closed and all heads bowed, maybe you want to pray this prayer along with me now. Lord Jesus, thank you that you died on a cross. Thank you that you rose again. I'm sorry for all the sin that I've done. The sin that has separated me from you. But thank you this morning. I've realized that it's not by my human effort. It's not by being good or even coming to church. But it's trusting in what you have done. That your death and your resurrection is enough and Lord Jesus I come to you and I invite you to come into my life 
to be my Savior and to be my Lord, to be my King and my friend. Lord, I ask you in your mercy and in your grace to forgive me for the things that I've done that have been against you. And I invite you to come into my life right now. Help me by your Holy Spirit to live a life that gives glory and honor to you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. My friends, if you've said that prayer for the first time this morning and really meant it, I want to give you some good news. You're in the kingdom. You've been made a part of his family. If you've really meant those prayer, that, that prayer for the first time this morning, if you've really meant it, you're in. Your sin has been dealt with. Please come and tell us. We'd love to celebrate with you. We'd love to help you along the way. And maybe I can just take a little bit of thing just to say this one thing. Someone told me this this morning and hopefully this will make you laugh and make you smile and have a bit of joy as well. There's Pilate and Joseph of Arimathea, they're having a chat. And Joseph of Arimathea says, I want the body of Christ to take him and put him in the tomb. And Pilate says to Joseph of Arimathea, but Joseph, you're a wealthy man. You've bought a grand tomb. Surely that's for you. Why are you giving it to Jesus? And Joseph says, it's only for the weekend. It's only for the weekend. Hallelujah. He is alive. Praise the name of Jesus. So here I am to Step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you.
bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy. Yes, Lord, let that be the song that rings out from this place as we finish our time together. Lord, our hearts cry out that we want to worship you, not just here, although that is why we are here, but everywhere that we go, Lord. As we go to have lunch with family or friends or we go back to our homes, as we go to workplaces this week, we are here. We are put in this earth to worship you. You are lovely. You are worthy, you are wonderful, and we are your children. Thank you, God, for everything this morning. Thank you for our time together. I pray you'd continue to be with us as we have fellowship with one another. Amen. Amen. I think most of the kids have come back through, but can we hold back two minutes? Just give the kids team. They've been having a lot of fun next door. I saw egg and spoon races happening. So just give them a moment before we head through for tea coffee. Death had claimed its victory. The king of love had given up his life. The darkest day in history. There on a cross that made for sinners. For every curse is blood. One final breath and it was finished But not the end we could have known For the earth began to shake And the veil was torn What time